Our next presentation is entitled Effective Winter Cover Crops on Peanut and Rotation with Cotton. And our speaker is uh, Ana Julia Acevedo. Okay. Okay, can you all see my screen? Yes, looks okay. very good. Thank you. Thank you. So good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, as Dr. Cameron said, I'm Ana Julia Azevedo. I'm a PhD student at the University of Georgia. And today I'll be presenting part of my research on effect of winter cover crops on a peanut in rotation with cotton. So winter cover crops are planted in between seasons and are known to decrease input costs. It also can improve yield, enhance soil health, reduce soil erosion, as we can see in the picture, some erosion in the soil, uh, conserve moisture and protect water quality. <clears throat> it's also harvest to supply biomass for livestock feed or bio-based fuels. And peanut is an important summer crop in Georgia and commonly used in rotation with cotton in the southeast. Our objectives are to evaluate winter crops, winter cover crops for biomass production and crop quality, and the subsequent effect on a peanut cotton rotation. And our hypothesis is that winter cover crops increase soil health and consecutively yield on summer crops. So for materials and methods, we have three sites of our research in the state of Georgia. The first site was in Fort Valley, and here we can see a, an, aerial, an aerial picture of the plots. Our second uh, location was Shellman, and our third location was in Tifton. So in order to keep our rotation, peanut and cotton, we have here a demonstration that's an, a real uh, picture of one of our locations, where inside the white square we have the cotton, and inside of the black square we have the peanut, and to keep the rotation, we switch those every year. So some of the experiment research factors are, first, the, cover, the summer crops, and we have peanut and cotton. Then we have winter, the winter cover crops, where we have two legumes and one cereal, being the legumes, the narrow leaf lupin and the white lupin, and our cereal ripe. So we combine those, then we have the narrow leaf lupin, then we combine narrow leaf lupin with rye, white lupin, white lupin with rye, rye and a fallow. Then our third uh, factor is the cover crop termination where we have the harvested. In that we harvest the plots to calculate biomass production of the cover crops. And we also have the road where we apply herbicide, roll the cover crops and we plant on top of that. So our experiment research, uh, design is a split-split plot with the main plot being the summer crops, the subplot, the cover crops, and our sub-subplot, the cover crop termination. Here we have a table with our, all of our treatments. We have the colors of each treatment so you can get familiar with because we will be seeing that in the graphs that will be uh, shown in, in the presentation, in the graphs. So we have our first treatment that is an air leaf lupin and we have a picture of the crop. Our second treatment is an air leaf lupin with rye. Our third treatment, it's a white lupin. Treatment four, it's white lupin with rye. Treatment five, it's rye. And our sixth treatment, it's a fallow. Here we have some pictures just to illustrate how the plots look like after the, the cover crops. So we have the peanuts already planted. And as I said, uh, we have two types of termination. So all the pictures in the left, we have the harvested plots and all the pictures in the right, we have the road. So we can have an idea of how the, the residue was placed on the plots and how much residue we have for the different cover crops. Now some in-season measurements that we did First on the cover crops, uh, we did canopy, by, canopy coverage by imagery. 
So in order to do that, we used a square of 50 square centimeters. We placed that square in the plot and we took a picture with a standardized height of 1.5 meter. At the same time we took that picture, we collected the biomass inside of the square. So we have the in-season biomass. Uh, we also did final yield biomass and nutrient analysis. Now for the peanuts, we did final yields, uh, imagery of canopy coverage, nutrient, uh, final biomass, and nutrient analysis. For today's presentation, we'll be seeing the results for the cover crops, the canopy coverage by imagery, final yield, and for the peanuts, we'll see the final yields. Now starting with the cover crops, we have the results of canopy coverage. This was done in March 2018 which was around five months after we planted the cover crops. Uh, so we used to analyze those pictures, a software called Canopeo was developed by Oklahoma State University. So we have the coverage for each of the cover crops. Starting with the narrow leaf lupin, we have a coverage of 86%, which was the greatest among all the cover crops. For narrow leaf lupin with rye, uh, we have a coverage of 55%. White lupin presented a coverage of 43%. White lupin with rye have a coverage of 40%, which was the lowest. And for rye, we have a coverage of 54%. As we will see in these next slides, the early, early canopy coverage did not reflect on final biomass. Now we have some results for the final biomass or for our first location, Tifton. So we have the years 2018, 2019, and 2020. So in the graphs we have in the x-axis the treatments and the y-axis the yield in kilograms per hectare. Uh, differences were observed in the three years of the study at this location with narrow leaf lupin and narrow leaf lupin with rye consistently the greatest and the right alone uh, the lowest. The overall production at this location was lower when compared with the other two locations. And these results help us to see the potential use for feedstock or biofuel of the different cover crops. Now some results for Shellman. We have the same three years and we observed that narrow leaf lupin with rye had greater biomass than white lupin in 2018. And in 2019 and 2020, we didn't observe any differences uh, among the treatments. Now our third location, all the three years again, and we observed best results with rye and the lowest production with narrow leaf lupin, white lupin, and white lupin with rye for the years of 2018 and 2019. And for 2020, the final yield was calculated using the biomass collected in the 50 square centimeters and narrow leaf lupin and white lupin had the lower biomass. Now we go for some results for the peanuts. Here we have the first year, 2018, with all the three locations. And the only difference in these graphs as the ones we've seen before is that we added this, the, our sixth treatment, the fallow. So we have in the x-axis the treatments and the y-axis in uh, the yield in kilograms per hectare. So we observed in Tifton and Shellman have an average yield similar and in Fort Valley we observed a lower yield. And in the first year of the study, no differences were observed for peanut yield following different cover crops. Now some results for 2019. Uh, there were no yield differences for peanut in any of the locations for either year, regardless of the cover crop use. For Fort Valley, hot and dry conditions caused weed control problems and poor yields. Now as a summary, uh, differences on the cover crop yields were observed in most of the site years with some variability. And based on studies, an increase in soil health and quality takes time. So the potential for larger differences on row crops may be greater after successive cycles of the rotation. 
As a future research, we have two more years of data collection. We will analyze biomass and nutrient content on cover and summer crops. We have some physiological measurements in imagery analysis on the summer crops. I would like to thank my advisor, Dr. Scott Tubbs, my committee member, Dr. William Anderson, Dr. Alisa Coffin from USCA, all the UGA PINO team, the technician, graduate students and student workers, Fort Valley University and USDA ARS for all, all their help. And with that, I'll take any questions. Okay, thank you for that presentation. And so we have plenty of time from the audience for questions. And we'll start off with one from uh, Dr. Barry Tillman. And the question he has for you is, are there other benefits of cover crops besides erosion control? And this part B to that is, so what are the advantages besides erosion? And then are there disadvantages to cover crop use in peanuts as well? So both the good and the bad. Okay, so the question was if we have some more advantages of cover crop and some uh, disadvantages. Uh, some more advantages that we can see it's weed control, uh, uh, water, uh, the soil can hold more water. And as a disadvantage as we, that I saw in my experiment is the residue can cause some problems at planting. So we have the right equipment, we can see uh, seeds in the ground. That would be one of the disadvantages. Thank you. A follow-up question to that from uh, Gary Schwartzlow is following years two and three and in the various cover crops, did you see difference in germination and early season vigor? So following years two and three and in the various cover crops, did you see differences in germination and early season vigor? So the question was if I saw some uh, differences on germination and vigor and the following crop after the cover crops. Uh, I didn't. I didn't see any of that. I can look further into it, but so far, uh, not really. Okay. Our next question is from Dr. Mark Burrow. Are there plans to calculate cost and returns of cover crops? Uh, the question was if there are plans to calculate costs and return of the cover crops. Yes, uh, we have, this is part of a big project with the USDA and we have the economical part of the project that is being uh, done at the same time. Okay, thank you. And uh, one last question, at least for now, and is in the determination of cover crops, was, was disease susceptibility like the Rhizoctonia or Sclerotium rolfsii, was that taken into consideration or, or nematodes as well? Was there any consideration for disease or nematode susceptibility in your choice or in your observation with the cover crops? So the question was if there was any uh, observation of diseases after the cover crops. Um, we didn't look into that, but it's something I can surely see a look. Uh, overall, looking in the plots, we didn't see any uh, major diseases. Okay. Any other questions from our audience? And there are none, so I'd like to thank you again for your presentation. Very nice, and thank you very much.